my audio and now I'm pulling up y'all's audio and I'm switching the view and greetings and salutations travelers welcome back to the inn of planar crossroads we are starting up with uh, with this around the hearth which is going to be going over the CR 5 and 6 creatures that we would like to highlight and encourage people to use in their games but first housekeeping and announcements um, as always we want to make sure that people are aware that both my channel which is the Interplanar Crossroads as well as Tommy's channel have uh, Patreons so if you want to support myself or Tommy on Patreon you can do that there will be links to his channel links to the Patreon and stuff in the description below we have plenty of links in the description below uh, the the next announcement that I have on my little cue card here is the subscriber appreciation one shot that we're going to be doing within at the Interplanar Crossroads. Once we hit 100, subs 100 subscribers, we are going to be doing a one shot. Kane will be running it, and you guys should. I say this every time, but you really should feel privileged because not even we that you that game with Kane have had him run for us yet. So. Hopefully that will change in the future. But he will run a one-shot for a group, I think he said, of four. So we pick four people out of our 100 subscribers. The monthly giveaway is going to also be happening. We're continuing that this year. We're, we're going to go ahead and do that. I haven't decided what's going to be given away this month but we are going to be doing our giveaway. Usually happens towards the end of the month to allow people that want to get onto the Patreon and do that, get up to that tier, to be able to have that chance to get on the drawing. So that will be our monthly giveaway. Uh, we're going to be also releasing a new series, uh, also with Kane. He seems to be the spotlight right now. Kane is going to be doing something called Ghoulish Games. And it is where he's going to be doing a Let's Play of the Legend of Grimrock, the first one. And then he may do other ones if we find that people like and want to watch that. The, the episodes seem to be coming to me in about 30-minute chunks. So you can give us feedback and let us know how you guys like those. Uh, my final announcement is that we are looking at trying to attend some cons this year or at least one con in st louis the st louis comic con and tommy's nodding his head because he was the one that got gifted the pick the the tickets for himself and sarah and i was like well my parents live up close to there so maybe we could come up and swing and then colin was like well maybe i could swing over since it's up here he lives in he's in like close to chicago not in chicago but close to it so not exactly super right there but maybe but anyway that's that's a possibility happens in june so we will see what goes on and those are all my announcements what about you tommy you have anything you want to announce before we get into the monsters um i guess i should announce now that i'm definitely looking at both of my monsters and they're both cr6 so i'm scrambling to find a five real quick but uh other than that my channel is currently uh we're holding a giveaway where we're giving out uh, free character art from a guy named Ollie Boldador. Uh, OllieArt.com, I believe, is the link to his, uh, like, his wonderful artist. He's a super nice guy. I had him uh, draw. You go there and you look at his art, you'll see a picture. It's a, like a kind of kitsune, but more like a Japanese mythology kitsune and less like a Pathfinder one and a Gripple and other and stuff. I commissioned that for a friend of mine for a uh, basically supporting me when I was broke for a year, more or less. Uh, but the dude is super personable, super nice, uh, super easy turnaround time. And for everybody out there who's like, I'm going to make a Kasatha Barbarian, there's no art for that. That's what this is for. Of course, the people who play in real life can have sweet art to show to your friends and like to commemorate a character that's really important to you. But for the Roll20 people who can't find stuff or like, Again, for like, I know Adam is playing in Starfinder, I, a, uh, uh, oh god, what are they called? A Sarcesian, which, and there's two pieces of art that I've ever seen for a Sarcesian, so he's on a Kaminoan for Star Wars right now for his token. And I fucks. 
so instead of doing like a uh, like like this subscribe here retweet that what we're doing is uh describe the character that you would have drawn why you want them drawn what it means to you stuff like that and at the end of two weeks i'm gonna pick one and you will receive a free uh bit of art from this guy so uh just drift over the channel for the next two weeks all my videos will have a link to it i'm sure there'll be a link in some doobly-doo somewhere on this uh other than that that's all the announcements i really have other than again, I am super stoked to be here and it's been two weeks and I've been kind of, oh, everybody's got a family. We can't do a round hearth. I'm really stoked to be back. Well, you, you're you saying that and where's your, your, your CR5 monster? Uh, Somewhere oh. in this page somewhere. Okay. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll find yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Oh, you got, you let me know when you uh, find one. I speak of the devil. Oh, oh. What's up, dude? Colin is here, too. Yes, I should look very pretty with my new camera. That's oh, what yeah. was taking me so long. I had to set that up. Nice. All right. So for everyone that's watching at home, uh, I will try and keep up with everyone's discussion on what monster they're talking about as we go through. And just so everyone has it, paste. There we go. There's the bestiary page from on D20 PFSRD, and you can look through there. Tommy, I guess I will let you go ahead and skip around since you don't have your stuff ready. You can go to CR6 first uh, and, and tell us Deal. your CR6 while you're in the back of your mind mulling over what CR5 you're wanting to highlight. Okay, sure. So uh, for my CR6, it's a toss up between two that mean on a, a live stream, well, it's not a live stream, on a stream on my channel that's uh, based off the N64 game, uh, Ogre Battle 64. It's, I'm going to go ahead and say, because of the way things fell during a one shot, that my CR6 monster is the Will O Wisp because they are super nasty. And when I'm thinking about my monsters, especially because, like, you know, Around CR6, around this point, the players are starting to get magic items. Uh, casters are starting to get, like, really scary. The Barbarian has enough rage powers to where he's doing a bunch of weird stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that a lot of monsters will fall short as you, like, go up the level chart. This is going to prove more and more the same. Uh, like, it wasn't too terribly long ago that I was playing a, a character that could take down the four horsemen of the apocalypse, not all at once, but individually in a couple of rounds with pretty much no problem. So I really like monsters that can, like, carry their weight from anywhere from, like, down here in CR6ville to 20 plus and the will-o-wisp is one of them. I say this because I watched four of them kill a 19th level cleric and it was, like... That will probably be my next week when we're on Black Dragon Gaming and we're talking about how to build uh, encounters. I'm going to highlight that encounter because that encounter was sweet. But I'm choosing the Will-O-Wisp because the Will-O-Wisp, uh, in addition to being able to just like turn on and off invisibility, uh, they have a fly speed of perfect and they have a touch attack which does 2d8 points of electricity damage and even like higher up there, there's going to be a lot of monsters that... Uh, that have really bad uh, touch armor classes and a lot of players as well. But, like, I mean, I this is why I prioritize decks all the time when I'm building is because I want to make sure all my armor classes are good. If you're going up against, like, human fighter with low decks or uh, some anybody in heavy armor, pretty much, you just go float a Will-O-Wisp up to them and just 2d8 electricity. I'm pretty sure we have... Uh, they're immune to all magic except for magic missile and maze and no one has maze prepared probably so these guys are really hard to hit uh for cr6 their armor class and their touch armor class is 26 which is pretty huge for that cr as far as i'm aware and again they can move wherever you want whenever you want and you just kind of just ping somebody on the forehead and there's 16 in electric bridge mm -hmm. i'm actually it makes me curious with all the things that they can do and considering that a Tarrasque may not even pay attention to them, would they just be able to slowly whittle down a Tarrasque if you had enough of them? That would, that would be interesting. 
Probably. Uh, what is the what is the DR for for a Tarasca? I'm right. Well, if the Tarasca DR is is terrible against lightning attacks, then potentially you mean yes. resistance. Well, we're not talking about Tarasca this time anyway, so you can't distract <laughs> yourselves. That's Tommy's number six. Did you, uh, now I know you've been talking for a long time. You, you've been anticipating this level because you wanted to highlight something else, too. So you can go ahead and highlight that real quick. I did, yeah. And we'll come back to you after Deal. everyone's okay. finished for your CR5. So what is, what is okay, that? So my other, CR, my other CR6, and again, you can see this in Lordly Caliber around, <laughs> uh, is like 9 through 12-ish, somewhere in that list of episodes. Really, any of them that say featuring the Interplanar Crossroads, because Adam was cool enough to hang out with us at the time, was uh, the Death Worm. I like my monsters to be reactive. This is why my PCs always take a swashbuckler level so I can parry, so I can have that ability to hit you when you hit me. The Death Worm has that uh, in addition to an, like a oodle of other things that it can do. Uh, in addition to it having a pretty solid bite attack that poisons you, it has a, I never got to use it, but it has a ranged touch attack shooting uh, like lightning at people essentially. Uh, any creature that touches it or like attacks with a natural attack uh is subject to the venom well not the venom but the poison of a uh of a death worm which is a lot of con damage i'm trying to find it 1d2 con where are you poison saves. dc 17 which stacks a lot and i may be biased on this guy because uh when I was jamming that, I had an alchemist who's natural attacking and a synthesis summoner who's natural attacking. So they come out with like a bunch of attacks. It's okay, make a fort save, make a fort save, make a fort save, and it gets really rough really fast. And uh, for the synthesis, I don't, yeah. yeah, if you remember yeah, you are in that twenty, yeah, yeah, you did. But beside the point, <laughs> these guys also uh, the corrosive blood ability. I don't really like to mess with it because I don't know the table for like. A morning star and a scimitar and a like great axe oh my is uh like their hardness and stuff but uh if you hit a death worm with a piercing or slashing weapon made of metal the creature's blood like just acidic blood shoots out and does 3d6 points of acid damage to that weapon which can eventually just eat through somebody's weapon mm. uh, i i think uh... it penetrates the metal's hardness so yes mm -hmm. Most uh, item harness, it is like a like ten to fifteen, I believe, for most items. But mm -hmm. it could be wrong. I think metal metal's not, but uh, regular other stuff, I believe, is. Right. Also, this guy has a breath weapon, which I kind of like half tried to do. There were a lot of like secrets in that encounter that never came up, and we'll probably talk about that in a week as well. But. Uh, He's got an 8d6 breath weapon. This guy, essentially, like, I really like my monsters to be reactive, and I really like my monsters to be able to target a single out of player. But if you know a player has, like, a lower, lower reflex save or a lower fort save or whatever it is, this guy's, like, kind of a little tank, essentially. We can target a reflex save, we target a fort save, we target their base armor class and their touch. And we're hurting their weapons when they hurt us, so we remain reactive. In addition, I'm pretty sure we have tremor sense, don't we? I'm pretty sure this thing has tremor sense. Uh, I think they do have tremor sense. Yeah, that's got tremor sense out to sixty. The uh, sixty, so uh, like there's, it can get around like rogue shenanigans. And again, maybe I'm a little biased because I watched it do a lot of work really, really fast, but. Uh, and I guess the burrow speed, yeah. Burrow speeds, uh, if you could get it where, and you would probably if you're GMing, and you put this guy in, like, the rocky outcropping or the desert or what have you, this guy just comes up out of nowhere in the middle of the party or just kind of, like, pokes his mouth and, bah, breath weapons you. You have a lot of options, a lot of answers, and that's what makes him really good. So that's why it's tied for first today, Will-O-Wisps and uh, Death Worms for my CR6 pick. Hmm. All right. So... Colin came in and said that he has some stuff, some people picked out. So we're going to go to him and let um, Tommy work on his. So Colin, do you have a CR5 that you want to highlight? Yes, it is not technically 3.5 or even K5, 
canon path or not technically Pathfinder even canon 3.5, but it is the bacon elemental. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I can't bring that bring one up. up last time. All right, hold on. I'll, I'll try and bring that one up. I have right. a, I have a link. Oh, you do? Give lay the link it on me. It was sort of an April Fool. Uh, it was an April Fool's 3.5 monster that someone came up with on some website, and it's just it's just great. Uh, yes. It has a mind affecting effect called delicious smell. <laughs> Uh, any creature within 30 feet or 60 feet, if they possess the scent ability, must make a will save DC 15 or else be overcome by the urge to take a bite out of the bacon elemental. They must spend their next turn uh, moving in the most effective manner towards the bacon elemental, making a bite attack against it if they have one. If they do not, treat it as an unarmed strike instead with their mouth. <laughs> it's wonderful. That, that is hilarious. It's a CR three monster too, so you can you can put that in there and then bump it up with two advancements or something like that. Bacon has yeah, never been so scary. <laughs> exactly. That monster, it's it it's not like a fun a uh, joke monster to put in a game. It remind me of the garn or one of the plant races that they taste quite the. Uh, quite tasteful to eat. I think it's the garns or one of the plant races that the that they protect their own kind due to how tasty they are for hunters to to kill them. They are Yep, that's yeah. a Goran. We uh in a three dot five campaign we ran into some of those and that was uh that was interesting. Fighting some bacon elementals on the plane of elemental breakfast. <laughs> plane of elemental breakfast the we have to visit there at some point. Yes. <laughs> the, the bigger the question is... All right. All right. The, the, the question, did any did anyone bring a bring a iron with them? <laughs> well, I cast iron pot. You, well, it gives you a bonus to intimidate checks or something like that. Probably not, but that would be good. That is funny. Uh, if you actually want to see a bacon elemental turned into a, a calzone elemental, uh, I think that's what we did the last time. No, no, the calzone elemental was something else. But if you want to see food-based golems, go over to the Interplanar Crossroads and watch the one shot that is called uh, "Dude, Where's My Toffee," and you will, <laughs> you will see it. All right. It was a, that was a fun one. Yes. And I also have a CR6. I'm not sure what order we're doing this in. Yes, you're next. You're CR6. So. All right. I'm not sure if this has been brought up, but uh, this is one of my favorite monsters just due to the lore around it was the Red Cap. Mm hmm. I can see that. Yeah. So it's. I'm not sure if it's technically a gnome in some uh, it's a small fae, neutral evil mm. uh, but it wears a little red hat like a gnome except that it is uh, it is dyed red with the blood of its former enemies yeah so it's, uh, it's a creepy little fae creature that's fun to throw around yeah and I, I, I was actually looking at them too, and I saw that they have boot stomp, which is it's basically ride by walk, move by attack, um, for them if they they get a free kick on you, they can basically kick your shin with their spiked boots as they move past you. Yep. And that can be, it's like, it's basically like spring attack. It says, but, ow, that that's not fun and they can wield weapons that are size category medium while they're small creatures so yeah yep i can see that they're they're feisty little things but they're they're fun and i i sort of in my mind have this image of how they talk what they sound like oh what do they talk and sound oh. like hmm? blood magic <laughs> There we go. It is now canon. Blood magic. No, I didn't do it right. 
You did it better. But yep. And they have a they have a weakness that can be exploited. But they would still uh, be a really problematic enemy to throw at some. Especially if someone that doesn't have a cleric, you can't mess with their ir irreligious uh, weakness. Because and even then, it's only a decent yeah, fifteen. They're... They're, uh, they're fun. They're fun little guys. All right. So that was your... So that's all I got for you. All right. That was your five and six. We'll go back up to five on my little yep. display. And we'll come to Donald. Mm. My first monster that I'd be using, I put it in the chat there. It's a Alu Demon. One of my favorite things as a GM to use is different type of evil monsters, how the evil is uh, different between different monsters type. So the Alu Demon, uh, this is quite the unique uh, demon. It have a bunch of the higher level, de higher level demon resistance immunities. So if you are not prepared to go up against demons, they're quite challenging. They have DR5 to cold, iron, good, immunity to electricity, poison, and then resistance to acid, cold fire. And then that, and then they also have the pesky uh, spell resistance as well. This creature have the charm person, detect thoughts, disguise, dis, 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 disguise self, su su suggestion, and a pretty nifty spell that a caster would get at the higher, higher level, dimension door. And this creature uses a weapon, and if they get to use their claws, they get to use the vampiric touch uh, ability as well. So, a vamp vampiric touch against a party that is not prepared against this, that can kill a party pretty quickly, especially if you roll quite high. And also, this demon appear mostly as a female human, so as long as they roll quite high and you give them caster levels to or give them class levels to actually disguise themselves even more this can be a villain right there with a bunch of demonlings or evil minions that serve them mm -hmm. with the with the mental stats and physical stats this could be a recurring villain that that is a pest to the evil side such as hiring people to go after the party and then for the feats, it is blind fight, which is quite nice. Cleave and power attack. So, so this creature, if we go up against a caster, not a fighter type, they could easily do a lot of damage to them. And then plus they also have the telepathy uh, ability up to 100 feet. So yeah, this is, is a fun demon monster if you want to use that is not demon when it comes to appearance. And the best yeah, part is being mostly a, human. It could probably pass off as a tiefling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, m being a tiefling and then just hiding the wings and tail in an outfit of some kind, that is an easy way to pass through an area where tieflings is pretty common. Mm -hmm. no. And then there are a few where good, good alu demons as well. So a GM could use this as a mm, ally as well. We do want to mention that this is actually third party for some for people if they want to find it. Yeah. It is in uh, Tome of Horrors Complete. It is fun. So it's a three point five months it's a three point five uh, conversion, but it it's a pretty nice monster to use for Tome of Horror. Yeah. So, so that is a pretty nice book to use for monsters, Tome of Horror. Mm-hmm. And then my my C R six monster that I'd be using, it is the Lamp Lamia. Uh -huh. The uh, Lamia. The one reason why I like the Lamia or the monstrous humanoid of this type would have to do with rise of the Wound Lords due to the Lamia that you encounter in okay. that. Uh, no in spoilers, that though. Pass. No spoilers. No spoilers. I am. I am not. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I am not saying where you will encounter one, but when you do, it's pretty awesome on the channel. Watch it. <laughs> If you want to the party, 
go into a Lamia player. So a Lamia comes in different sizes for what you need them to be. So this is a CR6. So this have a bunch of uh, at will, uh, at will, at will spells and uh, and even spells per day. Mm -hmm. Relatively good AC, good hit points, give them a weapon, and they are they're a challenge upon themselves. Also, just like the Alu demon, uh, they can they can di disguise themselves to pass off as a human as well. Mm. Also, another reason why I like the Lamia uh, as a whole, it is the lore behind them. I, if I remember correctly, I think Phrasma cursed the uh, uh, Lamia's uh, present, uh, 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 the Lamia's ancestors with a monstrous curse, I believe. And I, so the... Uh, I'm not sure if it was Phrasma so the, or another one, but I do believe I remember reading that in some lore somewhere also once one thing that i like about lamias and and demons is there are two uh, different there are two different type of evils that, that i like especially when it comes to monsters okay mm -hmm. and then they get to use a uh, creature get to use equipment that are mm -hmm. size medium for them so, being a large size monster, they get to use medium sized weapon and, and armor. So, give them a fighter class, and they get to use fighter weapons and armor. And that's quite uh, deadly as their uh, their their stats is pretty good for a fighter. Strength eighteen, dexterity sixteen, con fourteen, and the mental stats is pretty good to pass off as a human. There you go. So. So, so yeah, Lamias are quite a nice monster to use, especially if they get to use their Wisdom Drain on, on the party. Yeah, especially it's, if it's, you've got a fighter that's dumping his Wisdom. Which I don't know why you would, but it's, it, it does happen. It, it's, only a, it's only a 1d4, and it only takes enough 1d4 damage for a fighter to be KO'd, getting the Wisdom modifier down to 1 or 0. Yeah, well, well, bad stuff starts happening before you run out of things too. From my understanding, standing yeah. of energy, uh, ability drain. So, anyway, I like it. Yeah. I liked it. Yep, yep. Both of these, are, both of these monsters, just for lore and how you can use them, are quite fun from a GM point of view. All right. Okie dokie then. Now we'll come to Joe. Joe, CR5. Go for it. CR5. I bet you all expect me to go for the troll. Well. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Well, guess what? I'm going I'm going to talk to you guys about the cloaker, actually. I really oh. like it. Um, you guys know from the last, uh, well, not the last time, but the time before when we talked about... Uh, um, my love of things like doppelgangers and skin stealers. Um, the cloaker is kind of on that line, but he's, he's a bit different. He's not the same thing over and over again. Um, but he's another great thing that can sow discord through a party. Um, when we, when we at, when we're at the top, he has a okay AC. Um, he's a, he's an aberration. He has great initiative. He has dark vision. He has pretty good perception. His AC, like I said, it's okay. Uh, pretty decent, uh, hit points but he's maxed out pretty good saves um he's got a fly speed 40 foot average um which is pretty cool it's a large creature so he's got a pretty good uh pretty good reach except for his bite um speaking of bite his, his attacks are pretty like well they're not that good um when they're just on their own uh he's um and uh, really, he's not that strong on his attacks, except his bites. Okay, for a creature of the CR, um, they have combat reflexes. Almost nothing has combat reflexes in, at this point in uh, the bestiary, um, which is, I think, pretty ridiculous. Um, which he has uh, Dex of sixteen, so that's four attacks of opportunity he gets at, uh, at a time, which is just ridiculous, I think, when you consider the fact that nothing else has combat reflexes. 
Um, he gets a plus 16 to disguise himself as a cloak. Um, he's intelligent, so he has like things like knowledge, religion, um, sense motive. Uh, he has an okay stealth, um, but he's probably going to really rely on his disguise. Um, but where we get his actual, like, like really nice abilities that he has where we're looking at the, the engulf is okay we're gonna start with that um you can wrap up a medium or smaller creature as a standard action um it doesn't provoke an, an attack of opportunity when he does so uh if he wins which uh i mean his his cmb is uh, okay it's okay we'll say that his cmd is uh, pretty okay as well but the cmb is okay um but uh, he gets a plus four on his attack roll um, with his bites, uh, so he can uh, that 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 bite becomes it, it'll probably hit probably, um, yeah. And then it can still attack with its tail, of course. It, Go ahead. And it lo- it's really I like cloakers. It was on my list too, uh, because I am determined that at yeah. some point I'm going to get my drow fighter that I had to find a cloaker and that be his mantle uh but oh yeah they make buddies or something but it has a lot of stuff going for it especially when it's got these other things it can do like it can do a fear it can do other things like that and the dc is only 15 but if you're using it more as a as an assistance to your current character or to a bait or baddie if it's like a a, Mm -hmm. the cloak of a bad guy that can be really helpful and if you're worried about it in combat, uh, yeah. you can always use its shadow shift ability for a blur, a mirror image, or a silent image. A uh, good uh, quick quick encounter using the uh, the cloakers. If the party failed to uh, failed to perceive the uh, the cloakers being monsters, the party could just think they are cloaks and put them on, and then that could be a counter when. The cloakers and the party members—they are elsewhere, away from away from uh, public sight to, to kill the party members. Yeah, they're all getting their winter cloaks yeah. on, and it's like, "Oh no, take this one," says says the drow merchant. Take this cloak; it's a lot easier. Here, free one for the halfling. <laughs> so there you yeah, go. Yeah, uh, it's I, I, I like the shadow shift as well. It's a uh, it's not really casting spells, but its ability to like create illusions. Uh, it's like yeah, like you said. It's it's a. I like to make a lot of like support. I like to point out like support things. Like this cloaker is, I think, a pretty decent support creature when oh, it comes yeah. to the big bands. He's probably going to be in a higher than CR five encounter. Um, yeah. We'll see you 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 get the might lord the might might vermin lord like we're talking about. And then he gets a cloaker as his cloak. So he's got this big, huge cloak he's wearing around, riding his, his spider. I mean, you're starting to build a little army there. Yeah, or you get a doppelganger who's wearing a cloak all the time. And then all of a sudden it turns out, oh my god, he's a doppelganger and his cloak is attacking me. Yeah, uh-huh. there you go. All right, so that's your CR5. Um, yeah, we want to go ahead and talk about CR6. Because my CR6 is, I, 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 maybe Tommy could guess it, but my CR6 is the Clockwork Soldier. Mm. Yep. Um, because the Clockwork Soldier just really loves to shut down mental casters, um, people like hold, hold creature, uh, that's a personal, or like hold person, hold animal, hold creature, or hold monster. Um, personal favorite of mine, and I know Tommy. Tommy's had some problems with, uh, well, I don't think your mesmerist has encountered that. Um, but there's a reason they're in there, of course, is to screw with Tommy uh, and his mesmerist to try and deal with the clockwork soldiers. But um, for a CR6, if we compare the cloaker to the clockwork soldier in the like attacks, and uh, well, the AC is pretty much the same. He's got way better hit points. Um, he's got DR five over adamantium. Who has adamantium CR at 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 a CR six encounter? Though there are probably going to be a bunch of them in attack, so it's probably going to be more like CR ten ish. Um, but he's got a plus one halberd that adds eighteen 
then 13. So he's got two attacks, and he adds 13 on his attack with his halberd, or on his damage with his halberd, uh, which already does 1d10. Um, I think really the only thing where these guys are like, really weak is I, I think electricity would be pretty common after you encounter the first one and you're probably going to encounter several so after uh after the first encounter with these guys electricity is going to be uh <laughs> um pretty standard issue here uh so i think really the only like weakness they have is their vulnerability to electricity um well they're not vulnerable other than that to they've got electricity i don't think it says vulnerable yeah they are but uh, yeah, maybe it's weakness is vulnerable to electricity. Oh, it's a different construct that I was uh, looking at. That had that okay. was good for electricity. But go ahead. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, I can't. It's it, it's one of the. I know what you're talking about. Where they go crazy instead of like, uh, just get crapped on by it. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, like. He's he's got a really like really nice AC here. Um, well, not too much in the cloaker, but that DR. Um, he's immune. To, he's got the construct traits. Um, pretty much going to hit every time with his melee. Maybe not on the second attack. Um, I just think they're a really solid all around combat creature that's going to shut down a mental caster. Yeah. They're. Uh, I liked them as well. They were pretty cool. And I like that it actually incorporates the winding of them into their stat block. That they can run two per two days per yeah. hit dice every time they're wound. That's funny. Yeah. That just screams gnome. Yeah, it's important. I had a, I had a, I had a character. I had a human. Uh, um, well, he he is an Aslanti, um who uh, fielded. I believe by the end of it, we had around like three or four thousand clockwork soldiers because he had just a factory pumping them out um, along with clockwork mages uh that we used to nuke an entire field of dragons we had around a thousand and forty eight at that time uh, uh clockwork mages and they all unleashed a, just this barrage of uh fireball um but uh but he had a bunch of these guys running around and every we just like We'd just be like, oh, is that this town is undefended? Okay, we throw a bag on the ground, which has a portal in it. We just march in a crap ton of troops. Yeah. See, it looks like he's going to say something. Joe and I do like to war game. That's, that's all I'm going to add on that one is Joe and I do like to war game in the Pathfinder. Mm. All right, then. Any more remarks about your clockwork soldier? No, I think he pretty much speaks for himself when you're looking at the page. Yeah. So you get some. You get, like, an extra-dimensional space that Tommy loves so much, and you just store them all in there like a big catch-all closet for all your clockwork soldiers. Yeah. And you just pop them out when you need them. Mm -hmm. Instant transport. How we did that was... Uh... How we did it was originally it was a GM item and Sarah was jamming this and we like it was her first time jamming a game that she was like super serial about so she let it happen not to just to like see like to press buttons and see what happened I guess but eventually we ended up moving them around with uh, it's from the Iron Fang Invasion AP not to like spoil anything but the item is called the Onyx Citadel and it's in the first book just like page two you can see what it does and yeah it's basically just here's a castle go clockwork army and my like five lizard folk or whatever <laughs> i didn't build my army i had to recruit them oh yeah that sounds that sounds you know, like I it was, was a thing uh, hmm? i was thinking those clockwork soldiers that would be a uh, fun for a christmas themed or holiday themed one shot yeah. with the nutcracker oh theme it oh yeah except model model a short the actually path after the nutcracker yeah that'd be cool it's funny you mentioned that because the way like this was at a time when Islanti was, it was just kind of like put out there um as just kind of like oh these people exist so uh the way i interpret it was that they were like uh, is that they related more to like a semitic culture um in fact he was kind of based off he had i had everything had hebrew names um so actually, it'd be a Hanukkah themed adventure. Thank you. Um, oh, just thought nice. I'd point that out. 
your your Hanukkah is Lenty. Yeah, that's just how I interpreted it. Was oldest cultures on the planet Semitic, um, Hebrew, and I was just like, go get yeah. out there. When you look at when you look at pictures of like priests of Aridin and stuff, they definitely look like ancient Hebrew priests too. So yeah, I definitely agreed with it when we played it forever and ever. Now I'm having like flashbacks to my black dragon disciple and I miss him. <laughs> it was good times. There you go. All right. So I will go last. We will go to CR fives for me. I like something a bit smaller than everybody else, I guess, except for it. Uh, no, I don't think it's the same size. I don't think it's a small creature. I like the lurker in light quite a bit for a CR5 creature. I, and for a CR5 creature, I'm kind of surprised that it ex exists at a CR5 because the the creature itself, the lurker in light, is a the small humanoid lurks the edge of illu illumination. Its fine features blending away at the edges, making it appear blurred and out of focus. Moving into the light, it vanishes, but is its invisible presence is tangible as a feeling of being watched. So you get this, you get the party to roll perceptions checks. It's bright daylight. They're traveling. I mean, it's not like they're expecting anything to happen. They're just sort of walking around, doing stuff, traveling to the next town or something like that. And then you say, roll perception checks. And you have them roll perception checks. Maybe they do good. Problem is, this thing has a plus 19 to stealth at a CR5. So, and it's, it is literally invisible in the daylight. So you say, it's a, you tell them, oh, it's a beautiful day. You guys are really enjoying the nice warm sun. Uh, it's the first sun of spring that you've really got to enjoy. And, uh, you know, everything's Everything feels great, but you know, just at the back of your mind, you feel like you know, feel like somebody's watching you. And then you I'm don't tell have to them watch anything out else. For those words from you. <laughs> oh, think so. Well, you guys are traveling yeah. to a uh, to another town tomorrow. In broad daylight. In broad daylight. I got chills. Uh, chills when you read that description there. Ooh, that's spooky stuff. That's spooky yeah. stuff. That's right about our CR two, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's. It's CR5, and yeah, it's right about your CR. Um, so you may or may not yep. encounter it. But it has two claws and a dagger. And its dagger has a 19 to 20, and this creature likes to use poison. And it gets sneak attack with 3d6. It's a small fey. They can turn invisible in broad daylight with a sneak attack of 3d6 that uses poison on a regular basis, like in its lore. It's... Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. And the poison stacks, and it and in bright daylight, it functions as greater invisibility. So when it hits you, it's still invisible, as long as there's bright daylight. That's really freaky, because then you tell the people, oh... All of the sudden, Colin, Emmy just feels the state stab into her back, and shh, and it comes out. And you take, let me see, if you took, aver let's say you took three damage from those D6, that's nine damage to Emmy at level five. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fair amount. That's, that's... I don't remember how much she has because it's been too long since he's done Rise of the Rune Lords, but that's that's pretty close to half. Yeah, pretty close. And it More. has it has daylight daylight door, which functions like dimension door. And it has ritual gate, where if it takes a humanoid victim and it sacrifices it, it can make a gate to basically. Anywhere on the material plane, anywhere on the elemental planes, or into the realm of the Fey. That's pretty powerful when you go thinking about, this is a CR5 creature that can basically travel the planes with one sacrifice. That's all yeah. it takes. They're neutral evil. They don't care. 
That's... I like this creature. And that, that poison, by the way, is a DR, DC 17 at level 5. And it does immediate strength damage, so... Oh, yeah, cool. she'll be dead in one round, then. Yeah, one round, Emmy's down. Well, it's one strength drain. It's one strength drain, excuse me. And then the secondary effect, if you don't save, is 1d3 strength damage. Okay, so it's only... So it'd take at least five rounds to strength her out. She'd be she'd be dead before then, but... Well, it takes one... Don't go getting any ideas there, Adam. It's one strength drain, and then the secondary effect... It's a two-phase poison. The secondary effect is a d3 of strength damage but you only have to successfully save oh. once to cure it. So, but it's a six round thing. Okay. So yeah, these oh. things, these things are, oh. that's nice for a, that's nice. I like that. All right. That's my CR5. That's Anyone else have any comments on the lurker and light? I don't know, but if that's your CR5, I'm scared to see what your CR6 is. <laughs> my CR6 is a bit more uh, jovial, I'll say, or a bit more fun. Uh, okay. There's lots of stuff you can highlight in here, but I kind of like uh, the Zorn. It's at the very end. And I like the Zorn because they, they're a neutral uh, creature. They don't have a bunch of wants, a bunch of desires. They're not it's not super built for combat or anything like that. They do have DR5 bludgeoning, and they're immune to cold fire and flanking. So you can't get a sneak attack off on them unless you blind them somehow. But why I like them is I can just see these guys. They have all-round vision, plus four in perception, stuff like that. Can't be flanked. But they're just wandering through. You're wandering through the Underdark, and you, you start to get followed by this this creature they've got a 10 intelligence but you know they're just following you it's a medium creature so it's it's kind of big but it's this three-legged three-armed three-eyed creature with a hole in the top of its with a floppy hole in the top of its head that it occasionally it doesn't try to hide from you you'll see it pop a little gem into and just kind of watch you guys and not hmm. And you're like, what is that thing doing? So you go and talk, you, you kind of, you know, parlay with each other a little bit. And you find out this thing knows its way around here pretty easy. It knows how to get around down here in the Underdark super easy. It can glide right through stuff. Glide right through the rocks. It's even willing to show you how to get out. But first, you gotta pay him. And he wants loot. He wants <laughs> gems. He doesn't want gold. He doesn't want, you know, he doesn't want the medals really. So they're okay. He wants gems, and or jewelry, or magical items. You got to pay him in that. And if you can pay him, he'll help you through. So I like that type of creature uh, for this for this CR because there's lots of things in the si level six CR that can really start to tear people up. But I like him because I can just see him doing that and eventually opening his own shop at the mouth of, uh, what is it? He he go, He's a Zorn that opens a shop up at the up on the surface or right near the entrance to the Underdark and saying, hey, need to wave a way through? Come on, I've got you. Got you covered. Starts vending out magical items. So... Uh, the the uh, Zorn uh, re remind me of uh, remind me of the NPC I made that actually traded magic items for magic items, mm -hmm. and that could be a good NPC if you need to get certain magic items. So it's a item trade in for equal worth for items. Yeah, that's for GMs. That's not a bad mechanic to have because sometimes the loot you get off a monster, none of your people can use. So instead of selling it, they might go and try to trade it off. Not a bad idea. All right. 
So that's all of our CRs. Those are our CRs that we are allowed to talk to, except for Tommy. He gets to come back and do his CR5. So you have I do. a few minutes to do that, Tommy. A few minutes. All right. So uh, a lot of really cool CR5 creatures. And uh, like I'm a big fan of Greek mythology, and this is where we start to see the siren is here. Here, the Manticore uh, basilisks are also really strong. We passed Medusas, I'm pretty sure. But uh, the monsters that we want to use, again, we want to make sure they're effective forever because otherwise, uh, again, the players will always surpass them. And again, around CR5, CR6, this is when uh, when your players are starting to get like into their bag of tricks. You know, I don't know how... <laughs> To put it another way, I don't. Uh, I think it's ten thousand gold is the like average CR by level for CR five, and with ten thousand gold, like people have buffed their strength. They, there's a lot of magic items you can grab, so you want to make sure. Uh, that all depends on who your GM is. I'm yeah, the whole do something. Hey, I'm coming with that much gold. No, sweet. Anyway, I digress. The monster I'm choosing for CR five and Spiver and a monster that can. Choose the result of a D20 roll. The D20 roll once a day is, is the Sprite Swarm from uh, uh, Fey Revisited. A lot of the unsung heroes of the universe. They are. These guys aren't like leech swarms or tick swarms or anything like that. Ability, on a, I'd call it an ability. But, uh, uh, well, it's called called an ability it's called mob mentality long as this so uh players who are smart enough to like oh okay there's a swarm of snakes let's not go in that room and the snakes don't follow because there's like a dumb swarm right same thing with spiders rats leeches oh my the sprite swarm has the capability to like reason out that it needs to chase you. And I think sprites are chaotic neutral. Yeah, sprites are chaotic neutral. So as a GM, you can come up with like whatever reason you need pretty much to have these guys go like sick a party. They have a space of 10 feet, so they're gonna hit a bunch of people. And uh, they have an ability to blind people for 1d4 rounds, but a DC 16 fortitude save isn't that. Like, I feel like the people you're going to try to blind probably will pass that fortitude save. However, it is there. So if the party is a bunch of wizards, you just, like, buzz into them and poof, poof, blind them. Give them, the like, the strobe light treatment, I guess. Uh, and also, once every four, yeah, 1d4 rounds, these guys can, uh, if more than one creature occupies their 10-foot space, happen, like, get it up that way and use their attack action to concentrate on one of the creatures and do 46 points of damage to it and again that's uh you don't roll a hit it's just it's like an environmental hazard these little guys you just, just bam there it is they take 46 points of damage um in return you don't hit anybody else but that might be enough especially in metas where like uh if you're on a low point by or you take average hit points or like god forbid you roll and you know one twice or something that's enough to just kind of like you're gone and at higher level play it's still like 70 hit points at higher level play is nothing somebody's just going to pick up as like plus five growing uh, i can't think of the other growth enchantment off the top of my head. oh but the plus five growing other growth enchantment impact. i know you guys know it impact, impact yes that's it plus five growing impact uh keen I don't know how much. I think that's all ten. But anyway, you're gonna. What I'm saying is, you're gonna smack these guys in half, in one hit. But they're still gonna get probably that 46 off. And again, they uh, they have the ability to speak. They have the ability to reason. And uh, one thing we don't talk about it a whole lot. What we do, but we don't talk about it like is that more memorable if you can role play it out as opposed to just here is this. I will hit you. Now it is your turn. Ah, now I will hit you. And you go back and forth like that. Uh, and the sprite swarm gives you the ability to be effective like a swarm while also having the ability to like have narration, have uh, a bunch of people with funny little sprite accents buzzing in people's faces and still tell that story 
while being combat effective. And that's why I'm choosing these over a basilisk, which can petrify by you. Yeah. Pretty cool. Especially since you can yeah, s since <clears throat> since when you consider that DC sixteen fort save is going to be a lot harder for, like you said, those wizards or those people that are going to be able to blast them. Mm -hmm. All right. It's always really important, and like it becomes a little less items, yeah. but a worse save or your players' worst save, I guess rather, because like God forbid, all four of them have a bad fort save, then they have a bad time, but. Uh, <laughs> Just know who has the bad saves, and if you know he's got a bad fourth save or a bad con score or both, just here's a sprite swarm. Ha! -ha! Yep. All right. Well, let me see. That is about time for us. We're at about fifty-seven minutes or so. So we're gonna. I'm gonna, we're gonna go through the CR real quick, and I'm just gonna highlight a few, a few that I thought were pretty cool. Uh, the Brethodan were pretty cool. I liked the Crypt thing. Those are very thematic. Very, very good if you're wanting to run, especially if you're running like a dungeon crawl where you're right proper dungeon with minotaurs and stuff, having a Crypt thing in there or two or three. They can just, they don't, they don't attack the party. They just throw them around the dungeon. Never split the party for a reason. Ooh, and if you have the dynamic lighting on, it's nice. Uh... <laughs> The Venademon, the Venademon, excuse me, are really good for keeping things in check. Uh, the Brimarak and the Gull is an undead. Let me see, what did I put there? Oh, it's an undead genie, is what it is. It's a zombie is. genie. Yeah. So if you take a Gull, say that you're going through um a place that was connected to the plane of fire at one point by a genie and he dies well what happens to him does he just willingly go on or does his spirit stick around so there's that uh doo -doo 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 -doo. uh the i did want to bring up the helagromite it's a giant helagromite it is basically a big kind of centipede thingy and i was thinking oh my little mite vermin lord could totally ride that this is next mount, but, you know. Um, if you're going for theme, the Kodama Kami is great for, if you're trying to run a Princess Mononoke theme, uh, make them small, and then run through them on, the, and let them be those little clicky things, clicky-headed things from Princess Mononoke. Uh, the Murkinane, what else? The Sabosan. The Skeletal Mage. I actually thought of, of uh, Donald when I was when I looked at the Skeletal Mage and I was like, yep, that's uh, Donald's going to try and get one of them in his little wagon. But. The, the only issue when it comes to undead like that, you need to find those corpses. <laughs> you can. You're in a war. There's plenty of bodies. True, but need to the issue when it comes to thirteen undead, you you need to find certain types to resurrect them. But that's the issue with resurrecting undead. True. Uh, the mummies are also worth highlighting here because they're undead that are useful for going about and doing your thing when you're wanting to have something a bit more thematic. Because they have the bog mummy, which I've used before in another campaign and it was uh, very thematic to have them come out of the woodwork uh, well out of the bog itself and start to and they siege the house so there's that um, anyone else want to highlight something really quick in the C CR5s I uh, go ahead I, Donald you go first my, my pick it is uh, my pick it have to be the uh, winter wolf besides just being a magical beast uh, that you can find in a cold environment or cold forest this creature does a pretty good amount, amount of damage especially in a pack it have a breath attack and it's it is intelligent as a magical magical creature so you can encounter one and try to convince one to aid you it's going to, to be difficult as they're neutral evil and they probably will not aid people unless they can benefit from it 
-hmm. And then it would be the Rakshashas you begin to encounter at the R5-6 area and onward. Mm -hmm. And the Rakshashas are Aegean's best friend if you can use them right. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Throw one in as a merchant. So I had... uh... I had a, it's not good per se, like in terms of like, it's really effective in combat, but it's a, I like pointing out things, especially like on my channel too. I like pointing out things that uh, like we won't see with the core stuff or the SRD. This guy comes all the way from uh, Tide of Honor is the second or third book in the Jade Regent adventure path. I forget which, but at CR5, we do have the Raiju, which is essentially that, that Pikachu evolves into this. And that's what its picture looks like. It's just an angry little thunder rat. Uh, it's size category small. I mean, I think I could make the argument to turn that into an improved familiar if you wanted to play a Pokemon trainer. It's not like it does some stuff that's kind of cool and it can like turn into different forms and stuff. It's not like amazing, but the flavor is important. And I like how Paizo will do like these little like throwback. Well, throwbacks is the wrong word. Uh, like shout outs to the Elder Mythos or. Uh, other video games, other like bits of mythology, and then here we have Pokemon and nowhere here's I think the Raiju is also a creature from Japanese mythology as well, but you know why it's in there. It's in there because it is the evolved form of Pikachu and it exists and you can fight it. Yeah, if you ever wanted to if you ever wondered why in Pokemon they didn't just waylay the other Pokemon with their fists, you know? Now you know. Because Raichu's a CR six and you're probably a CR two adventurer. Or wander or townsperson. That's what it is. With the young template. <laughs> yep. All right. Anyone else want to highlight something from CR five? Super quick. Yeah, super quick. I like the Drake flame as well. Oh yeah. You do uh, start to encounter the Drakes around this time. Forest Drake was put just uh, before it that. Can be... It can be kind of scary. That's 5d6 points of fire damage with DC 16 reflex to half. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's... Yeah, it's just a standard action it can do whenever. So it's basically unlimited fireballs right there. A knoll riding a fire drake with a pugwampy in a cage. Everybody has to re-roll their, their saves, take the lower result. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> that would be a... Uh... Yeah, fun fun stuff. That's, that's my highlight. All right. The scaveling is also there, yes. Scaveling is somewhere in there. But... Uh, that's the ghoul bat. I've used the ghoul bat before. Um, very thematic. Uh, CR6. CR6. Anybody got something from CR6 they want to make sure to shout out to? No? Nobody? Nobody likes the... Uh, hey, I got mine. I'm good. Nobody likes the Ahoyzalti? Uh, or Ahoyzalti? Ahoyzaltal? This thing is a... I don't bear- even know what that is, man. Oh. If you wanted to have something that that does grappling for your on your cre- enemies, it's a bear-sized beast has the body of a squat sim- simian, a dog's face, and a long tail that ends in a clawed hand. So it basically oh, can fine. grapple you without being grappled itself. Its tail grabs you, and it do- it does not get the grappled condition. So it can still do other stuff. And it has voice mimicry to try and, you know, lure you in. So there's that guy. And he... This this is this is a general CR6 uh, monster. It is the uh it is the uh dragons. You get to begin to encounter the uh the infant baby dragons, the reverends, the uh the uh, the uh, young dragons at this uh area. Very true. So it would be the Imperial, Metallic, the Primal, the Chromatics. And at this area, uh, it's not a bad way to introduce dragons into a game with a baby dragon beginning to 
begin their personal treasure hoard, and then you uh, uh, threaten the baby dragon, and then you encounter the uh, dr the dragon mother, and you have, you have to deal with the dragon mother. Uh, yeah, but like, that starts getting you to swing outside your your CR then. Yeah, true. It just one of those things that it would be an interesting thing for a group of players to do to follow a baby dragon to the their lair. <laughs> and that could be a story plot to actually help the dragon out in one 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 area somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I do have one last highlight for CR six. Okay. The Volpinal Agathion. I'm totally butchering the last part of it, but whatever. I linked it in the chat. Yep. But just because, uh, I mean, everyone probably knows this by now, but I like boxes ever since I was a kid. So it's just a, uh, that's just sort of my attachment to it. It's a uh, neutral good outsider. That's well, if you're wanting to come up with thing. a, yeah. I mean, if you're wanting to come up with a different kind of story origin for your Kitsune that you're playing, Maybe one of their parents was a, yeah. a Volpinal Agathian, or maybe both their parents were. Oops. Yeah. There is also an Azamar bloodline. Uh, I yes. forget exactly what it's called, but it should be pointed out. Uh, I was reading this earlier in the week. I don't remember the name of the bloodline, but it's in Blood of Angels, and they get their own separate little bit of traits, and that specific one, the Agathian blooded one, if your GM's being super, like, alignment Nazi about stuff, there's a trait that lets the uh, the Agathian blooded one be neutral or neutral good and be a monk. So. Ooh, that's not bad. Mm. That's not bad. All right. So, uh, do -do 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 -do. the burbling, why did I have that on there? Let me check. Burbling. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, because it had flyby attack, I think. Yep. Dodge, mobility, and flyby attack. Which, I'm not sure why you would need mobility if you have fly... Well, fl mobility qualifies uh, you for if, flyby, doesn't it? Uh, if uh, you're flying by, uh, mobility is a great feat to have for attack of opportunity. Oh. I got it, I got you. Uh, let me see. Ettons are good. The giant owl is actually neat to have as a... Because they're, uh, they're human level or above intelligence. So they get... And they get some kind of supernatural abilities. So they're fun. The demon incubus, which is basically the male version of the succubus, actually has some a strong ability in it and called Pain Redoubled. Uh, when the incubus confirms a critical, critical hit with a melee weapon or a natural weapon, that attack deals an additional 2d6 of non-lethal damage, and the target must succeed at a DC 19 fortitude save or be racked by pain, becoming sickened for 1d6 rounds. Multiple uses of this ability extend the duration. The DC is career wow. based So, you can, you can keep someone racked with that non-lethal damage and non-lethal damage stacks until if you're damaged and the and your non-lethal meets it you go unconscious so unless you, unless you're playing a character that somehow becomes immune to non-lethal damage this can be very devastating if this guy keeps on critting especially if you take his uh he's got an 18 to 20 threat range on his crits and that's not even a keen scimitar. That's because he he uses that. It's just a masterwork scimitar. So you give him a keen scimitar, that guy, you just give him one magic weapon, and that guy just became pretty tough. Another feat to increase the crit range even more, I think the feat is improve critical. That, or... One Z feet. Don't stack. No. I really wish they did, though. I'm glad they don't. Thank you very much, as a GM. Because I w and you, oh, you should man. be glad they didn't too. Because then, be the yeah, then uh, Vargas would have took it. You know, Traxor Vargas would have took it, and he would have been like, he would have crit 
more than once in that little roll we had. So I think I got to attack twice. But that aside, uh, if you don't want to use the Death Worm, but you still want something comparable, the Sugathi is actually useful for that. Um, S E U G A T H I. Um, but that's really a really really good one to use if you're wanting a worm that is not a death worm. And I think they're intelligent too, if I remember right. So they can actually think and reason. Um, and yep, they're intelligent. They've got a 14 intelligence, which which is above average. So definitely something that they can do aura of madness confused command item use because they've got little tendrils that they can use to use an item and they have a poison with a 17 dc so definitely definitely hitting above its uh threat range of cr6 if you give it some stuff uh if you're wanting to have a Cenobite themed campaign, always go with Chiton. You got a Chiton Evangelist at this level. And then finally, last thing I'm probably going to mention is the Mygo, because it is a uh, an evil creature that you can use as a vendor and it looks really weird. So if you want to throw a, an NPC out there at the characters that are lower level, but make it like this evil merchant or this evil tradesperson that they can deal with that looks reptilian and a little bit of reptile a little bit of bug and a lot of plant all mixed together really freak them out but have them have really good items like you want to deal with this thing possibly might be worth it amigos are super sweet yeah i think i think the amigos are the ones that can like they dissect people and they can like move around your like ability scores and stuff. They capture you as well. I forget. I used something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was the Migo. I had like eight or nine or ten of them go up against the Sarah's Gripley, and that's how like we flavored in the the uh, the Fae template on it. Was she just woke up and there's suddenly there's butterfly wings have been stitched onto her back. <laughs> uh, also, worthy note that this combined with uh, um, that thing is. I know this is where we start seeing the Elder Mythos stuff in uh pathfinder i'm sure if you dive through strange eons you can find some cr1 cr2 like little dumb scary baby cthulhu's you can stomp on but uh again it's you don't really give it as much justice i call it cthulhu type thing in pathfinder because we are stronger than cthulhu because we are pcs and but uh it's still it's a lot of fun to flavor it it's a lot of fun to like be in that universe and again they are like adam said they are super 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 creepy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. Another interesting monster is the witch, uh, witch ward. If you want a plane traveling, planet traveling uh, NPC to encounter an act of the merchant, these are an interesting monster to use. It has the dimension door, uh, uh, door ability, which is pr pretty neat. And then have an interesting ability called Azorb Force. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone uses a magic missile on on them, they effectively grab it. Yep, they grab it and store it. So they can catch it and then throw it back at the PC. So it, is a, it, is, it is one of those nifty, unique uh, defenses they have. And plus, uh, having a a outsider that travels from planet to planet make an interesting NPC to interact with, especially if mm -hmm. if the characters do not know anything about the multiverse. Indeed. All right. Facts here: the Witch Weird is a player race, yes. and uh, they uh, they I think they're like the like progenitors of the Kasatha, or they like. The Kasatha worship them, or something like that. They have some like a position of superiority over the Kasatha, so they go uh, farther than here. Which uh, book is this? The Starfinder, Starfinder uh, Alien Archive. Uh, oh, Starfinder. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty chill with the with the lore of Starfinder. Not so much about the system, but that's 
that's for another video that's actually on our channel. Uh, our, our secondary impressions after getting an Adventure Path Run Force in it. All right, we are over time again. It seems to happen, but at least we stayed lower than two hours or something like that this time. So anyway, let me see. We are done with that. Let's come back to where you guys can see us. There we go. And I want to thank everyone for coming today. Do Tommy, do you have anything you need to bring up before we sign off? Um, no, I think I covered all my bases pretty well. Uh, well, at the end of the month, I'm going to be doing a, uh, oh, I don't remember what it's called, but I'm going to do a chat with Nerdarchy, and I'm pretty super stoked for that. Like, I'm so excited for that. I'm taking off work to do it. So uh, that's the 24th of January at, like, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, it'll be live. I don't know exactly how he does this thing. I'm a little YouTube illiterate, but I will be there there and i'm super stoked and again adam thank you for setting that up out of nowhere uh and again it's always a super big pleasure to come down here and hang out with you guys for a little while and just kind of talk about like dumb fantasy monsters basically yeah all right then yes feel good because i got to that i haven't even been on with them yet so there you go i figured you would probably have more success getting on with them since they since you have about 200 plus people subscribe to you and i only have almost 100 we got 10 more people people almost 100 10 more people travelers i bet so. i'm gonna with a little bit of luck my channel hits 10,000 plus views before january is out so that's pretty exciting for me because that means we can start it's not like i'm super stoked for the little bit of money youtube will give me but it means i can start uh trying to monetize my stuff and that's a step towards like being successful in the YouTube world and not having to work a job I hate and being able to use the knowledge that I have and the stuff I enjoy for like the betterment of my species and the betterment of myself. So it should be a pretty super exciting month for me. All right. All right, everyone. We need to sign off. It is almost, we've been on here for almost an hour and a half, but oh well, that's just how it goes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, travelers, for coming by and stopping in and sitting around the hearth with us. We hope that you have a great day. God bless and enjoy. Bye. 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 <laughs>